Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com. You are nothing like them, and they are nothing like you. You know, I used to hear that a lot when I was a kid growing up. Um, even in my early 20s, I remember my brother uh, Joey walked up to me one day when I was in my mom's kitchen. He said, um, out of the blue, just, you're, you're different. I'm, I'm kind of making a sandwich. I'm not really paying attention to anything. I'm like, what? He goes, you're different. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I don't know. He goes, you're just different. And I kind of egged him, not egged him on, but like, like, what do you mean? Like, I tried to like pull it out of him. He goes, no, I don't know how to explain it, but you're, you're not like the rest of us. And you know what? A lot of us on this channel, we have heard this our entire lives, even up into our adulthoods. Sometimes from complete strangers or people who've only known us at the gym for a little while. People will just walk up and say, you're different. There's something about you. Have you ever noticed how people will just stare at you? I mean, just like kind of like lock on, stare at you, and you're kind of like, what the hell are they looking at? <laughs> It's because the way you are, your energy is different than theirs. Theirs is very linear and yours is very non-linear, meaning a, an expanding circle. It's a sphere that expands out. So even your eyes are, your eyes are deeper, okay? People who are very left brain linear, your pupils are just tiny and you're looking external where Whereas internal or right brain people, they're looking internal. So the pupils tend to dilate and you have a, you have a depth to the, what your eyes. They have a depth to them, okay? So people, unless they're taught this, they don't really know what it is, but there's just something. It's about the way you move, the way you talk, the way you walk. You're just different. Even the way you think is different. You're thinking from a third dimensional way, the right brain way, versus the linear logical left brain going down the line way. You unconsciously use a different language and you don't even know you're doing it. Now, the only reason why I know this is because I'm trained in linguistics. It's the same reason why you like to listen to my voice and listen to this channel. I use a lot of what we call positive languaging or what I call additional languaging. So addition means one plus one equals two. So those words are like and, both, plus, more, yes, of course, uh-huh. Even the word uh-huh is a positive affirmation. It's a positive word or positive one plus one equals two. Now let's compare that. Now notice how you feel when I use these next words. Okay, watch this. So negative language is one minus one equals zero, two minus one equals one, okay? So they use words like but, no, not, can't, won't, shan't. Uh, and they're they're very frustrated people because they're constant. See, not only do they minus from you and take away from you, but they're taking away from themselves. And that's what's really causing their frustration. They truly believe in order to have, they have to take away from someone else. That's the way they look at the world. That's the way that brain is. That brain takes everything away. And it makes you feel like shit. You get tired, you get exhausted, and it, 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 it frustrates you. It makes you very upset. So... The first language was the right brain. That's the right brain adds things together. Okay, think, think of a puzzle. The right brain will literally take one piece of the puzzle, talk about it in detail, and then it'll talk about another piece, talk about it in detail, and then it will connect the two. And then it'll do the same thing to third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and it's building up to a bigger picture. This is right brain processing. The left brain cannot understand that. Because the left brain is, is not doing that. The left brain does this. It, it, it'll it focus on one thing, say a carburetor in a car, and it'll master it. It'll really learn the details about it. But what it does is it now throws it off to the side, and then it randomly grabs another piece. So let's say the muffler. And what the problem is, it never connects the two things. It keeps everything divided and separated. 
Now imagine two people, a right brain person, which is usually a woman, but not always. I'm a very right brain person, but it is partially by development over a period of time. So imagine taking a left brain person and bringing them together in a conversation with a right brain person. So here she is putting the pieces of the puzzle together, building up the bigger picture, and he comes along and he separates all the pieces. Do you guys see the problem here? This is the typical conversation between a man and a woman. This is also a typical experience between an empath and a narcissist. So she starts in this long uh, dialogue in describing every detail, every piece of the puzzle, and then connects it and explains how they connect and then, you know, explains the next one, so forth and so forth. And he comes along and it's, it, it's like he gets really upset and angry and he'll yell out, well, just get to the point. It's equivalent to, you know how you might spend an hour or two or three hours building a puzzle, putting the pieces together. And then your little brother comes along and smashes the puzzle right before you finish it. That is a typical experience between a left brain and a right brain person or a two dimensional and a three dimensional person. It's extremely frustrating. Okay. <laughs> now here's the deal though. If you take two right brain people and you put them together in a conversation, they'll have a wonderful, wonderful conversation. But take two left brain people where they're always dividing and separating the pieces of the puzzle. Not only do they not understand each other, but they constantly argue and fight, argue and fight, argue and fight. So you can take a narcissist and leave them on their own and they will just be miserable forever. You could take an empath or a right brain person, leave them on their own and they're going to be happy. They're going to add this to that. They're going to add this to this. They're going to do this and that. Their life is a wonderful experience. Okay, so do you remember in the video I made about two videos ago where people will finally let go and surrender? Because here's the deal. They're holding on to that way of thinking, even though they don't like it and it frustrates them and angers them. But they don't know any different. They don't know that there's a better way. They don't know there's a more enjoyable way. They don't, they don't know there's a more prosperous way. See, when you're mighty sing and subtracting, that's the way you look at life. It's like, okay, the reason why two-dimensional left brain people believe everything is tit for tat or it's like I said, it's the either or mentality, right? It's right or wrong, either or. They believe there must be a sacrifice for everything because you can't get anything for free. That's just not the way life works. Yes, you can especially when dealing with God. Literally, it literally just says, ask and ye shall receive. It doesn't say ask and pay the toll. <laughs> literally, it says, ask and ye shall receive whatever you ask for in prayer. This is biblical. Jesus said this. If ye believe, you shall receive whatever you ask for in prayer. That's it. The left brain believes there has to be an equal and opposite exchange. It's either or, either or, right or wrong. If you've got uh, $5 worth of gold, I must give you $5 bills. It's got to be an equal exchange. That is absolutely not true when it comes to the third dimension, when it comes to opening up to the spirit world. It believes in weights and balances. In order for me to be good, that means you have to be bad. So I've got to paint you to be a bad person, even if I have to make up stories or twist stories or add things or take things away from the story. Somehow, some way, if I'm good, that means you're bad. And that makes things equal. Now here's the really weird thing. Even people who are religious, who read the Bible, who believe in God and believe in spirit and all this stuff, they look at it from a two-dimensional way. It's either or. If I want something, I have to give you something. Okay? So what do they do? Oh, dear Lord God, please bless me with a new, a new house or a new car. And, and God says, yeah, fine. And they go, okay, God, let me go kill one of your cows. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm literally going to kill an animal for this thing over here. They believe in sacrifice. Does that sound like a narcissist? Yes, it does. 
Remember, the left brain is the religion brain. It's about rules, rules, structure, and organization. What is religion all about? It's about rules, structure, and organization. Religion is a left brain process. It's the either or mentality. These are the people that truly believe you must sacrifice something to God. It could be praying for an hour. A lot of people believe if I pray long enough, if I pray hard enough, then there's the word right there. Then, if then, if I do this, then I'll get that. If then. And yet Jesus constantly says, by your faith, if you believe, that's all it comes down to. It's a gift. Look, you okay? This is okay. When one of the when I was a, a, an associate pastor of a church, the second to last presentation I gave, I had said, "Look, you cannot barter with God. You cannot negotiate with God. You cannot, you can't buy God off like you're in the mafia. You're not going to pay him off, okay? What are you going to pay him with? His own cow, his own gold, his own silver, his own. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like the, everything on the planet is his." All you have to do is open up to receive. What I said to the church, because I went through a huge spiritual awakening and the pastor and the elders wanted me to talk to the church about it. And I said, the only difference between me and you is I opened up my gift. That's all it was. The gift's already been given. It's already there. All you have to do is open it up. You can't buy it. You can't pay for it. You can't barter for it. You can't trade for it. That's all two-dimensional thinking, man. I mean, listen to what I said. Barter, trade, negotiate. It's like this. I'll give you this, many of this, for that many of that. Like, like, there's no negotiation. There's no bartering. That's two-dimensional thinking. This is why you haven't got it. All you have to do is completely let go. Just completely let go. What you're letting go of is that either or, right or wrong thinking. Once you let go of that, the gift literally will reveal itself. It is the most beautiful experience that you will ever experience in your life. And you will have it for the rest of your life. So I'm going to tell you briefly what my journey was. I lived a really, 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 really painful life, like unbelievably painful. Not only from the family or people around me punishing me, physically harming me, but I was a very disciplined person. Now, there's nothing wrong with being disciplined, but there is an extreme. I was trying to do everything right or wrong but that wasn't my nature and I knew it and that's why everyone kept saying well there's something different about you something now I was a I was an extremely disciplined person and I'm glad I took this approach because it, it helps you to wake up a lot faster that's why I said in my video about two videos ago like if you're a religious person then be religious to the absolute letter of the law absolute perfection because what happens is because of all the stress I was under from competition, family, just narcissist and on and on and on. I remember I, one day I, it wasn't one day I had broken down crying many, many times to God, but there was this one day when I just broke down and cried and cried. I begged God, I begged God to forgive me. I begged God to, to heal me, to take away my anxiety and pain and this fear that I had my whole life since I was a little, little child. So I had been meditating at this point for approximately nine years every single day. And at this point, I had gotten up to meditating a minimum two hours in the morning and an hour at night. And on weekends, it would be anywhere from eight hours to 12 to 14 and even 16 hours. And why was I doing it? Because I wanted to escape the pain. I was, I was willing to do anything that I could do. I was going to NLP trainings, hypnosis trainings, energy healing. I mean, I was doing things that were outside of, well, Michael, you're a Christian. You're not supposed to do that. I didn't care. I, I was willing to do anything and go to the absolute maximum. If they said to practice it 10 times, I would practice it 10,000 times. I was willing to go to the absolute limits to find anything to help me heal from anxiety. 
So I started to have temporary experiences with acupuncture, um, acupressure, massage, but the anxiety would only go away for a few hours to maybe half a day or a day or something like that, and then it would come right back. I remember the first time I did acupuncture with Dr. Chen in San Francisco. I mean, I was like, wow, this feels great. And he goes, now don't talk. And, and I was with my girlfriend. He goes, let her drive and just go to the beach and just hang out somewhere because they wanted to extend this. So it's got to be conditioned into you, right? This extend what? Well, being in your right brain, being emotionally grounded. And that's what it was. I was like, man, I feel great. So it was a very temporary, it lasted, the first time it probably lasted about three hours, okay? Then this, maybe two hours, I should be honest. And then the next time, maybe two and a half and then three. But I would always go back to the anxiety and it was just like, oh my God. The thing that I didn't realize was this is the process. You get an escape from your anxiety temporarily, okay? And then you keep doing it. And then so I was doing, so I noticed when I would meditate for about two hours, I could go to the grocery store and go out in public and I was in this very open meditative state. I was like, wow, this feels great. No anxiety. I'm open. I, I remember I was walking around with like a smile on my face because it was so, God, this feels great. And then about an after an hour, bam, it would come right back. I'm like, oh, I'm the rock. I remember one day, because I lived literally right around the corner from the grocery store, I went right back home. I went right back to meditating. I was determined. <laughs> now, let me kind of do a slight sidestep. So in the, in the workshops, we're going to do, hopefully, what is it right now? We're in October. So hopefully in November, we can get some kind of workshop going here in, in San Rafael, California, the Bay Area. So what I didn't know is there are techniques called uh, walking meditation techniques. Now, I was learning them. I didn't know what they were called, and some of them I developed myself. And then I heard one time about this monk does walking meditation. Now, I didn't, I'd never actually followed up with what it was, but I'm assuming is these are the techniques that I began to learn and develop and figure out over a period of time. So now I do these techniques while I'm out in public, while I'm with people, while... It was one of the things that helped me with my course, Crack the Female Code, to teach men how to calm down and be grounded when they're talking to a girl. Because it allows her to calm down while she's talking to him. It gives her that at-home feeling, that sense of comfort and relaxation. So what I was talking about earlier, anytime we talk about linguistics, it's what I learned and developed when I was helping uh, create my course, Crack the Female Code, the Dating Relationship Coaching course. Anything about being emotionally grounded, all of this is instilled into the men's course, Crack the Female Code. Why? So she can relax, so she can become emotionally grounded when she's around him. So earlier in this uh, recording, when I was talking about um, positive languaging versus you know, negative languaging, when you say and, both, plus, of course, yes, sure, absolutely, versus no, can't, won't, shan't, I became very aware because I became more in tune with my body. I began opening up to my right brain more from acupuncture and all this stuff and this the internal awareness techniques that I teach. And all of a sudden, I really started noticing, like, wow, women really don't like it when I say no, not, can't, won't, shan't. It really irritates and makes them take off. And then I began to notice the difference in people. Now, on a, I didn't quite, I didn't know what it was, but now we call them narcissists. I started noticing, like, when I was around certain people, man, my whole energy shifted, and I did not like it at all. So during this workshop that I keep bringing up that hopefully we're going to do it in November here in the Bay Area, I'm going to be teaching you all of these tech, well, maybe not all of them, it take, there's quite a bit of techniques, but I'm going to be teaching you my walking meditation techniques, this internal awareness where it grounds you emotionally, okay? One of the benefits is not only do you stay clearer, when you get around narcissists, they don't affect your energy when you're truly grounded. Now, this is not a snap, crackle, pop course. It's not like you show up one day and bam, you're done. You got to practice and practice. You have to get better at it, okay? So here's one thing I find. Women, they, they, they connect with these techniques a lot faster because it's part of your nature. It's just a very natural part of the way you do things anyways. And here's the funny thing. The reason why men want to be with a woman, hug a woman, cuddle, make love is because it grounds them emotionally. 
And so I have to tell this guy, you know, men, like, well, why do I got to learn these techniques? I go, because it makes her feel good. She likes this feeling. And well, this sounds kind of weird. I go, and then what ends up happening is I have a conversation. Well, isn't that the same reason why you want to make love to a woman? Like, well, what do you mean? I go, how do you feel after you make love to a woman? Like, I just feel really calm. I feel really down to earth. I just feel, and I'll say, content. And I go, yeah, it's like there's no worries. I just feel really content. I was like, that's exactly how she wants to feel. So one of the reasons why I want to do in-person workshop is because when I work with person one-on-one -on -one or in groups, you, I can guide your energy with my energy. Your energy literally feels what I'm doing goes, oh, that. So it's a lot easier uh, to do it in person, okay? I can also do it over the phone, especially with women. That's not a problem with men. Because they're so intellectual and this is such a weird experience for them, it's a little, it can, it depends on the guy though, it, it can be a challenge, okay? So I'm going to start looking for a hotel to rent a speaking room and we will figure this out. I'm going to start looking right now starting tomorrow and I'll hopefully give you a date within the next 10 days. So everything that I've taught you about narcissist, narcissist abuse, left brain, right brain, you can give 100% thanks to my course, Crack the Female Code. Because that's where I put it all together. That prepared me for what was to come years down the road, dealing with narcissist abuse and waking up to it and what the hell was going on and doing all these YouTube videos. All right, so back to my final awakening okay so as i said i was meditating for years i was doing acupuncture acupressure deep tissue massage deep breathing techniques and then i began to learn uh what i call walking meditation techniques okay so here's what i didn't realize at the time it is a process you do it and bam you're open so when i work with my clients especially men for five six days straight and then we'll do like one or two one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions like the next week and the week after that what I'm doing is, I, when you're with me, you begin to become more grounded. It's a lot easier, okay? You begin to sense my energy going, oh, I see what you're doing there. So the, the goal when you're working with me is for you to begin to pop open, to become emotionally grounded, to become internal, and begin to take on this energy again and again and again, day after day. We're conditioning it into you. So we're showing you how to get there. That is the goal. So eventually you don't need me to be there. Now you have the tools and the techniques that you begin to practice and you can get there on your own and you can begin to develop this more and more and more to where you can stay in this state or choose to go into this state at will. So I had been doing this for years and years. My anxiety kept coming back. And I just remember one day I just broke down crying hysterically because I had anxiety like you wouldn't believe. It was, it was a complete and total breakdown. And I just begged God. I prayed to God. It's like, and so what I did was I made a determination that I was going to meditate every single day until I got it, until I was there. I didn't eat anything and I did this for about it was either 14 days or 15 days I meditated all day all night until I went to sleep I woke up drank some water meditated all day and all night I think I had a little bit of salt I think that was the only thing so water and a little bit of salt and believe it or not but man I felt really good for the first five or six days uh, and I felt very strong. That was the really weird thing. Even the seventh to eighth day, I felt really strong. I could do push-ups forever. I could, I was, now, another thing I was doing, I was stretching. I did hours worth of stretching. And I was doing super hot baths with sea salt water and a little bit of rubbing alcohol and some uh, lavender oil. Okay? So here's what happened. On the 15th day, I think it was, is... I got it. Well, it's something I was... It's like... I was expecting some miracle happen. Oh no, that's when I broke down and cried. It was on the 15th day, the 14th, 15th day, I broke down crying hysterically. Sorry, I accidentally turned the off button. So I broke down crying hysterically. And here's what happened. Now this is really key because I didn't get it when I first did it. I didn't even know what I, didn't even know what I did. 
So I'm crying and I'm begging God. I literally looked up and I said, please come down inside me. Come down inside me and just make me feel better. Take the, all this pain away, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Please just, just, and I, I literally remember saying, I invite you to come down inside me and, and fill me up. And in other words, like take away all this pain and suffering. I didn't feel anything. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. I give up. I remember it was like, I'm done. I give up. And I went to bed and I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning. So peaceful. I cannot explain it to you. I went to bed thinking, God doesn't care. God doesn't love me. Nothing happened. I've, I've done everything I could possibly imagine. And I woke up so peaceful. It was the first day. I woke up without anxiety and I was like, wow, this feels, I can't, it, it was more than that. It was like, I had this lightness, this, this light about me. And I remember I went and looked in the mirror. Now I was always told that I was ugly ever since I was a little kid. But I remember I looked in the mirror. Now here's the thing though. I didn't really know what, what attractive or pretty was versus ugly. I just was always told that I was ugly. So I was like, oh, oh okay. I remember walking to the mirror and I saw my eyes and they were so blue. They were crystal clear blue and the shape of them, there's something about it. it was a round, soft look and I fell in love with myself. I fell in love with the energy that was coming from my eyes. From that day forward, for the next six months, I was healing people. I was, I told you about the young lady that had a baby or she was about, I think three or four weeks pregnant and she didn't want it and how I took care of that. It was just, everything was magical. It was the most incredible six months of my life. And every night when I went to bed, it was like, like I would have these learnings. It was like I was going almost like I was going to a classroom and there's almost, it wasn't a chalkboard. It was almost like in space, these drawings these, and everything was symbolic. It wasn't like one plus one equals two, et cetera, but the, everything was like symbols and I'll explain those in another time. But it was a learning and all of it went into my course, Cracked Female Code. That's how I developed the course. So one thing that I realized over the period of time and even years is that women were right about a lot of things. I mean, a tremendous, because here's why your right brain, Jesus was a right brain being. He taught in metaphor stories and examples. In other words, right brain teachings. If you read the teachings of Jesus with your left brain, that's a logical processor. It's going to change the meaning of what he just said. If you read the teachings of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Revelations, etc., with your right brain, you will understand it. Everything will become obvious, simple, and clear. Now, here's the thing. Women, when you read it for the first time, you actually understood it. But then your pastor or your father, some male came along, no, no, it's about rules. It's about rules. It's logic. That doesn't make any sense. And they convinced you that you were wrong. Now, they didn't mean it in a bad way they didn't mean to be a jerk or nothing like that but that's the way that their brain honestly perceived it because it's a different processor it's a linear meaning goes it goes in a line processor it's a logical processor everything with the left brain gets filtered through logic so everything becomes a logical experience so when you read the teachings of Jesus through your right brain, it becomes a five senses, 3D experience, three dimension. So all of a sudden you are literally understanding what he's saying when you read it from the internal right brain way. Why do you think Jesus said, look within? Because he was talking about the internal way. All right, now I'm going to wrap all of this up with this. So now we're looking at Israel and Palestine and the whole Middle East. These are very two-dimensional countries. They, we are talking about the peak of narcissism. This is narcissistic thinking, okay? So remember how I keep saying you have to let go, you have to let go? Well, what are you letting go of? You're letting go of the left-brained way of thinking. It's either or, right or wrong. You're letting go of that two-dimensional dichotomous thinking. It's either A or it's B and there's no other possibilities. That's two-dimensional left-brained thinking. Now, there's two different types of countries in the world right now. You've got the old school countries that talk about the past, and they are literally focused on the past and their history and, and their culture, and this is our rules, and this is the way it is. 
they are literally clinging to the old way. Then you have countries that are modern thinking. They, in other words, no, no, forget modern. They're just looking to the future. They're, they're focus is going in a direction in the future and therefore they can build and build and build whereas these countries back then it's all about saving face it's all about ego it's all about shame these are very high shame filled countries the reason why i'm bringing this up right now is because i believe we are at the pinnacle we are we are at the like an orchestra we are at the crescendo of this two-dimensional, frustrated, angry, shame-based, safe-face thinking. It is exploding right now. The world is at a point where we're realizing this is not working. It's the, it's the epiphany, the, the pinnacle of dichotomous thinking. I'm right, you're wrong, and nobody is willing to frickin' budge. So they're willing to sacrifice and kill each other. Ah, there's that two-dimensional dichotomous thinking, sacrifice. Two-dimensional beings will sacrifice. That This is a whole narcissist thing. They literally do black magic and they sacrifice. They'll sacrifice animals, a person if they can. See, even if they don't bring you to like a ceremony, if they can put poison in your food and get away with killing you, they consider that a sacrifice. They truly believe that if we do this, then they're going to get some kind of power. They're going to get wealth or, or their life's going to turn around. They believe you must sacrifice. So what I was talking about, there is future countries and there's past countries. These people that are holding on to the past, it's like this is like their nutrients. This is what what they are, who they are. It feeds them. It feeds their, their emotions, their ego. It feeds their way of life. Without this, they become nothing. And that's what happened to me after I'd done everything for years and years and years and years since I was a little kid, meditating all day long, every day. Even in at the very last two weeks for 14 hours plus 16 hours a day and I finally gave up and I broke down and cried and I begged God to take away my fear and it's like nothing happened and I just like I gave up and I will tell you something this is the part I did not explain. I felt empty. I felt completely alone. Like everything that I believed in was gone. Like nothing was real. It was it was it was I cannot explain the emptiness. I just gave up. And then I went to bed. And it was that giving up that is what caused the next thing to happen. I finally let go of the two-dimensional way of thinking without realizing what the hell I was doing. I sacrificed my whole life for the people I loved. I gave everything I had because I truly believed if I did this, if then, if I do this, if then, they will love me. And that's what I wanted in return. And I never got anything. And I got to a point where I was like, well, what's the use? And I gave up. And the next morning, I had everything. Everything you could imagine. My whole world shifted. I truly believe the pain and suffering that is happening. And I believe it's going to get worse. I think something big is going to happen. Maybe the big one. I think something really, really big is going to happen in Israel and Palestine. I think the pain and suffering is going to spread. I think other countries will get involved. There might be a really big bomb. My point being is we are finally as a world going to be like, this isn't working. This is just not working. We are dying. We are killing. And we've been doing this for thousands and thousands. We can literally say, I think it's been 3,000 years. It's a long time. I mean, myself, ever since I was a little child in the playroom, when I was two, three, four, five, six, seven years old, watching all the bombings in the Middle East and Iran and, and freaking, I mean, all of it, Israel has always been at war with someone and the Palestinians, and it's been such a nightmare. I'm like, I'm just so tired of it. I'm done. I honestly believe that what's happening over there is causing the entire it's not just that it's everything we've been going through not just for the last three or four years but it has picked up it's intensified exactly like that day when I finally just completely surrendered and I completely let go it was a lot of stress leading up to that for years and years we've been going through this as a world for thousands of years 
I believe we as a people on the planet are going to finally realize like this, this killing each other, this stubbornness, this dichotomous, I'm right, you're wrong. And then they're like, no, we're right, you're wrong. And that's what I was trying to say in the very first video. Like, well, why did they think that Israel wasn't going to retaliate? I wasn't taking sides here. Okay, like, okay, you guys know about narcissist abuse. So what does a narcissist do? They think they can hurt you. And they think they're righteous. And they don't think that you can hurt them back. If you hurt them back, well, you're such a monster. That's what I meant. So Palestine or the Hamas it killed all these people on the Israeli side and took, you know, so many hostages, killed the babies, etc. And they were celebrating in the streets. And I don't mean Hamas, but I mean Palestinians. And I'm like, my first thought was, I even called someone and like, I don't understand. Why are they celebrating? He goes, I don't know. Because I'm, going, I'm thinking... Israel's going to bomb the living shit out of them. Like they, they, they're going to get destroyed. And here's the thing. Just like a narcissist, they're thinking, oh, they're not going to retaliate. They're not going to do anything back because they're in the wrong. Because that's the way I see it in my one-dimensional dichotomous mind. So in their mind, they're thinking, well, I see it this way. I'm good and you're bad. And therefore, you see that too. That's exactly how narcissists dealt with you too. So when you when you kept getting you know attacked by the narcissist pain and suffering and all these mind games and gaslighting and you just suffered you were just like I'm done I'm done giving them love while they give me nothing but pain I'm done supporting them while they do nothing but tear me down I'm done with this one way freaking road and once you let go something shifted inside you If you think this is just happening to you and maybe to empaths, no. I think an equal thing is happening on the opposite side too. I think narcissists are going through a huge transformation right now. They're looking at the world and the world's like, yeah, we're not putting up with this shit no more. And I, I think it's a lot more than that. I think the whole world is about to crescendo and there's going to be this huge pop or even the word crescendo literally means orgasm. There's going to be this explosion of, wait a minute, what the hell are we doing? So in all sincerity, guys, I really think things are going to finally start turning around. I think we are going to open up to a brand new way. Do I think it's going to be an easy trip? No, I think when the when the rest of the world wakes up, I think their emotions are going to spill all over their place. And they're going to need a lot of therapists and a lot of a lot of emotionally grounded people to help them through this. And they're going to look at you and they're going to say, well, why didn't you tell me if you knew this all along? And you're going to look right back and say, I did for like 20 years. One thing I want to emphasize is you do not have to suffer. You don't have to sacrifice. All you have to do is start learning how to let go. That's it. And then start learning how to open up to your right brain. That's what these courses are about. God bless you guys. If you like this video, click subscribe, click the like button, make a comment. And if you want, go ahead and leave a donation on the PayPal link right there in the description box. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.